Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's a core to differentiation video and it's the third one on this chapter. We're talking about stationary points and using the second derivative to classify stationary points. Right, to introduce the idea, I want to um, draw for you uh, the following. I'm going to draw for you a graph that has a local maximum. I'm going to draw for you a graph that has a local minimum. And I'm going to draw for you a graph that has a point of inflection, something like x cubed or something like that. So, you know, the gradient's zero there. Okay? So this is a local maximum. This point here is a local max. This point here is a local min, and this point here is a point of inflection, and they are all stationary points. Okay, each of them are the three types of stationary point. Now, these graphs are plotting x against y equals f of x. Okay, x against y or f of x, depending on how you phrased it and x against y or f of x. Now, what I would like us to draw underneath, I would, I'm going to draw this. I'm going to plot x, right, against f dashed x, the gradient. So I'm going to plot x, not against y, but against f dashed x. So at each point, at each x point there, whatever f dashed x is, I'm going to plot those two against each other. And I'm going to repeat that process here. And I'm going to repeat that process here. Okay, so this is going to be x. This is going to be x. This is going to be f dashed x or dy by dx, whichever way around you want to call it. And this is going to be f dashed x, which is the same thing as dy by dx. So I'm not going to plot them accurately, it's impossible, but I'm going to plot roughly uh, something about them. Now, but I know at this point here, the only thing I know is that f dashed x is equal to 0. I know that, so I'm going to plot x against 0 here. At this point here, I know that f dashed x is also equal to 0. So I'm going to plot that x with 0 there. And lastly, I also know that at this point here, f dashed x is equal to 0. So I'm going to certainly plot that. Now, the only thing I know this side of the line is that f dashed x is, pos is a positive number. Because f dashed x is the gradient of this line, and it's certainly positive. So it's positive numbers all the way until it gets to there. And afterwards, it's negative numbers. So it's something like that. Let's have a look here. All the way before it gets to zero, it's a negative number. Uh, it's a negative number. It gets to zero, and then it starts becoming a positive number. And let's think about this here. In this particular case, it's a uh, f dash x is um, going to be positive. It's a positive gradient all the way along here, so positive until it gets to zero, and then it stays positive again, doesn't it? So it goes positive again, something like that. Now, the gradient of f dashed x is called f double dashed x. If I'm trying to work out the gradient of this line, it's f double dashed x. So if I'm working out the gradient of f dashed x, now the gradient of this must be negative. You can see because it's sloping down. The gradient of this one must be positive. And the gradient of um, this one is different at different points. So you can't say anything. Oh, sorry, that should have been positive there. And the gradient of this one, well, is different at different points. You can't really say uh, much about it. You can't really say much about it. Okay? So, What we're going to deduce from that is the following rule. If Here's the following rule. So rule one. Right. If 
f dash x equals zero, right? So we have a turning point, and at the same value of x, f double dash x is negative. Then we must have a maximum. You can see then a local max. Rule two. If f dash x equals zero, we have a stationary point, and at the same time f double dash x is negative, we must have had a local minimum, then it was a local minimum. And lastly, rule three, the only other, if f dash x equals zero and f double dash x, the only other thing it could be is equal to zero, then we don't know. So check by method in video two about whether it's a max min or point of inflection. You'd have to check slightly to the left, slightly to the right. Like in this case, it's a point of it's a point of inflection. Okay. So they're the rules. You have, in particular these two. These are crucial. You have to know these and use them at ease. The last one's very rare that it comes up. So let's do example one. This was the example in video two where I did it by the testing just to the left of the uh, local at uh, the turning point and then just to the right to establish whether it's a max min or point of inflection. I'm going to do it via the second derivative method. So the first thing we're going to say is at a stationary point or turning point, I like the word stationary point, dy by dx equals zero. Now we have that y is equal to x to the power of four, subtract 32x. So we know that dy by dx is going to equal four x cubed, subtract 32. And we're solving dy by dx is zero. So we're solving four x cubed, subtract 32 equals zero. Add 32 to both sides, four x cubed equals 32. Divide both sides by four, x cubed is equal to eight and cube root both sides, x is equal to 2. Substitute 2 back into the original, so y would be equal to 2 to the power of 4, subtract 32 multiplied by 2, uh, which is equal to negative 48, I think, negative 48. So we know that we have a stationary point at 2, negative 48. That's exactly what we got before. Now this time, to determine if it's a maximum or minimum, I'm going to work out the second derivative, d2y by dx squared. I'm going to firstly work it out with algebra, and it's equal to, if I bring down the 3, keep the 4, keep the x to 1 less power, and the number just um, um, differentiates to 0. So d2y by dx squared is going to equal 12x squared. I'm going to work out d2y by dx squared for the x number 2, when x is equal to 2, and I get 12 multiplied by 2 squared, which is equal to 48. Okay, therefore, if d2y by dx squared is positive, let's look back at our rule, if the second derivative, oh, I got these the wrong around, sorry, so sorry here, that should have been positive there, I made a mistake, please change your notes for that. Change your notes there. Um, if f if the second derivative is positive and the first derivative is zero, so we know we've got a stationary point, but the second derivative is positive, therefore we have a minimum at two negative forty-eight. Okay. Right, let's have another go, just example two, and it's very similar, and then we should be done. Find the stationary points to this curve and to determine. Uh, whether the, uh, by finding the second derivative, whether they are maximum, minimum, or point of inflection. To find stationary points, solve dy by dx equals zero. So we have that y is equal to 2x cubed, subtract 15x squared, plus 24x plus 6. So therefore, dy by dx, let's get a mark for working that out, bring down the 3, keep the 2, keep the x to 1 less power, take away, bring down the 2, keep the 15, keep the x to 1 less power, 
that's power 1, so we can bring down the 1, keep the 24, x to the power of 0, plus 0. And tidying this up, dy by dx is equal to 6x squared, take away 30x, add 24. Now we are solving, to find stationary points, we're solving dy by dx is 0. So we're solving 6x squared, subtract 30x, plus 24 is equal to 0. We could divide everything by 3 to simplify it. So 2x squared, subtract 10x. Oh, sorry, even more, my fault. You could divide everything by 6, surely. So this is x squared, subtract 5x, add 4 equals 0. So it's x take away 4, x take away 1 equals 0. So we have x is 1, and we have x is 4 are our answers for the stationary point. Y, matching that, well, we put 1 into the original one. We're going to put 1 up here. So 2 multiplied by 1 cubed, take away 15 multiplied by 1 squared, plus 24 multiplied by 1, plus 6. And we get ourselves Y is equal to, that's going to be 2, take away 15, add 24, add 6. So to my recollection, that's Y is 17. And if you uh, try and work out Y in this case, when x is 4, um, we're going to get ourselves, you have to type that in the calculator, so let's get our calculator out, and let's type 2 brackets 4 cubed, subtract 15 brackets 4 squared, plus 24 times 4, plus 6. You get yourself negative 10. So the stationary points at 1 and 17 and 4 and negative 10. Now they want us to find um, whether they are maximum, minimum or points of inflection. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this slide here and rub out what we don't need just now. So we're finding if they're maximum, minimum or points of inflection. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep my original function and my gradient function here. So all I'm going to do is just rub that out. I'm going to rub all that out. And I'm going to rub all that this out up to here. Right, so I'm going to move that. Oh, we can't move that much, but I can certainly move that, hopefully, up to there. I'm going to ungroup that. Okay, that's all the information we need. And we just need to find out if they're maximum, minimum, or point of inflection. So let's firstly do the point 117. Let's work out d2y by dx squared. d2y by dx squared. Let's do the work for that. So that's going to be, if I bring down the 2, it's going to be 12x take away 30. And I'm going to work out d2y by dx squared when x is equal to 1. And that's clearly going to be 12 take away 30, which is negative 18. Therefore, because this is a negative number, 117 is a local maximum. Because when the second derivative is negative and the first derivative is zero, you have a local maximum. And let's, for part two, we know d2y by dx squared, so let's just do d2y straight in there by dx squared when x is equal to 4 instead. Well, it would be 12 multiplied by 4, take away 30. It would be positive 18. Therefore, 4 negative 10 is a positive number. Uh, so 4 negative 10 gives you a positive second derivative. So 4 negative 10 is a local minimum. Okay, and we are done there. And that is how to use the second derivative to determine whether um, a stationary point is a local maximum or local minimum. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that useful. Tune in for the last video then on differentiation, on using it to solve uh, worded problems.